how do you handle angry customers? That's what we're going to talk about today on the show. Okay, guys, today, so we're going to talk about how to handle angry, angry customers out there in the field. Um, you know, obviously, you guys deal with uh, multiple personalities out there, passive people, aggressive people, very social people, um, and you got to know how to deal with them all. You know, I'm not going to lie. I get fired up pretty easily when uh, people, you know, like, you know, something's not fair or something like that. Um, I can pretty quickly uh, flip a switch. <laughs> but um, but in the field, you can't do that. You know, I mean, you'll, you'll ruin your company. I mean, you have to stay level headed, focused and customer service oriented uh, or else you will not go far at all in this field. But it's hard to keep your cool when you're put on the spot about uh, a part or a certain thing that the customer is upset about. Like recently, we had a customer who you know gave us the approval to make the repairs on his HVAC system. So you know um, when he got home, when the husband got home, um, and as we were wrapping things up, the husband comes home and he starts saying things like. Um, you know, it just basically just give me a really bad time because he knows how much that capacitor cost on Amazon and he knows how much that motor costs and he wants a breakdown on parts and labor. You know, what, what a lot of us want to do is be like, Hey buddy, listen here, I've got insurance and advertising. I got to pay for my vehicles and insurance and all the payroll and all this stuff. And, and that's true. That's what I want to do. That's what a lot of us owners want to do is be like, well, hey, man, you don't know, you don't have an understand, you must not understand like how much it costs to run a business um, and stay open and be there for next time when you need us. You know what I'm saying? So, so what I usually end up saying is, you know, you know what, sir, I've got the part. I've got it right here, right now. It's on my van. I can put it in for you. It's got a lifetime warranty on it. So if it ever breaks, we'll come back and replace the part. No questions asked. And he usually blurts something negative back towards me and it kind of just goes around in circles, right? Some of you guys have been through it before. As an owner myself, I tell my techs to just give them the part. I, it doesn't matter that much to me. Just give them the part. If that's if they're gonna be like that, we've got enough people that pay full price for the for the parts. Um, just let the guy have it. You know what I mean? Because like in this situation, the the part is already installed, so I'm not gonna take it back. I'm not gonna like go take it out of the system and take it back. It's not like I can reuse the part again. Your boss would much rather you deal with it in a way uh, where you're like giving it away for free than arguing for the sake of arguing to get that money for that part because you're right. You're right, right? It's not that big of a deal. One of the things I tell my guys all the time is this is a war. We're fighting a war. It's a long war and we're going to win many, many battles and we're going to lose battles along the way too. So don't get so focused. If you lose a battle, it's not a big deal. We will move on. We're going to win this war. That kind of gives you text the power to know that, Hey, if I screw up here with this angry customer, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, if I were to like give him something free or, you know, just, I'm just trying to take care of the guy. Right? So Whatever you do, it's not going to be wrong. And that's what you need to know. You're trying. See, one of the things is like, you don't know if this customer is going to leave you a bad review. So yeah, you're having a difficult time with this customer here in this house, but you've got to make it, you've got to make it good enough so that they're not going to go online and leave you guys a negative review because all of these negative reviews start to add up and you can have, you know, a lot of companies take care of this by, by adding multiple, multiple five-star ratings on, you know, just, just accruing five-star reviews so that when the, when the, the negative reviews do come in, they kind of get buried and, and lost in the pile. Or you have so many five-star reviews that people are just like, Oh, one star, I'll, I'll read it, you know, see what it says. But, but is that, I mean, like, is that all that matters to me is like, is, you know, is this person going to leave us a bad review? Well, it is a bad thing. It is kind of a big thing because in today's society, you know, so many people go online first to check out the business, uh, to see if they're a good company or if they're friendly or anything like that. And, um, you, that's just something you just gotta, we just gotta keep chipping away at just to make this ice sculpture beautiful. Um, you know, is 
with good reviews. So what we're trying to do is take care of this customer so much that he doesn't leave us a bad review or even maybe even leaves us a good review. So, but is that all that matters is reviews? Definitely not. Yeah, I like to empower my techs to give people, you know, give parts away for free. You know, like if this happens, just simply walk away. Watch them squirm when you tell them you can have it for free. Most people will start digging in their pockets and start saying, oh, I'm going to give you a check. You know, but, uh, but uh, I think it's only worth $75. So I'm going to give you $75, you know, or something like that. Um, they'll most likely give you whatever they think is the right price for, uh, for the part. But it's not like you have to accept the money either. Um, you know, I, I would simply walk away politely and maybe, you know, apologetically while, you know, not taking their money. I just wouldn't take their money. You know, your boss doesn't need the money that bad. He should be, he should be backing your every move anyways. You know, um, I'd much rather take care of my technicians than a mean customer. There's some other situations, um, where, you know, like a customer is, uh, upset about a mistake that you or your company made, right? A legitimate complaint, a legitimate grievance. You know, this is where you have to turn on the customer service. This is where you have to take care of those people. Uh, you know, like, let's say that, um, you know, let's say that on your last install, you know, everything went smoothly on it, but you forgot to, um, glue one of the PVC couplings together. A couple weeks later, now customer calls you back, says there's water coming through their ceiling. Um, and could we come out and check it out? Well, this is clearly our fault, right? I mean, we've got to take care of this. So let's start breaking down some ways that we can actually take care of this customer, right? So like, you know, deal with their feelings, listen to their story, right? Listen to all of their story. And you've heard this story a thousand times, right? But it doesn't matter. It, this is their story. This is Miss Jones story this time. And you have to listen to Miss Jones story, the whole story without interrupting. You know what I mean? Make notes of things that she's upset about. You know what I'm saying? Like make notes about it, write down, no when she's done talking, you should know what she's upset about, right? You got to know what's going to make them happy. You got to find out what's going to make them happy as well. So what's the easiest way to find out what will make them happy? Ask them. It's real simple. Just ask them, Mrs. Jones, what can I do for you today that will make you happy? What can I do about this situation that will make you happy? Um, what does the customer want, you know? What is going to make the customer happy? Just ask. And then once you know, you got to take that information and run with it. Either give it to your boss, use it for you to um, motivate you to, you know, take care of this problem fast. Now, get it off of the mind of Mrs. Jones. It can take a lot of, it can take a lot of self-discipline to shut your mouth and uh, you know, just listen to someone degrade you and your company about your workmanship and, and how it has affected this house, you know, I mean, uh, but, but in these types of situations, you just have to take it and eat dirt. You know what I mean? Uh, it's your fault. You'll take care of this, but right now you got to eat dirt. Another thing you want to do is put yourself in their shoes. Okay. This is their home. Now, what if this was your home? How would you feel right now? I mean, you can apologize here too. This is a good time to apologize and, and let them know. But but try not to say something like, oh, I know how you must feel. I know how you must feel. Don't say that more than once, okay? You know, I may have been trying to empathize at least on a conscious level, but what I really did was draw focus away from her anguish and turn the attention back onto me, right? So she wanted to talk to me about her ceiling and how much this me house means to her as it's been in her family for multiple generations. She wanted to share her feelings of this house so that I could fully appreciate the damage that we've caused to her house. Instead, I asked her to stop for a second and listen to my story about one time when a contractor put his foot through my ceiling at my dad's house one time. You know what I'm saying? So that doesn't compare. She don't want to hear that. She wants you to listen to her problem. Maintain eye contact. You know, too much eye contact can be seen as intimidating, uh, as you're doing something intimidating, right? 
Like this is crazy staring at somebody. This is not how you want to stare at somebody who's like a grieving, right? <laughs> no, you want to be like, oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, no, this is, this is definitely not good for sure. For sure. And I'm, we're going to take care of this, you know, something like that. But, um, but there's a good way of looking at somebody, staring somebody in the eye. And there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a caring, nurturing way of, of looking into somebody's eyes and showing them that you care, that you're fully invested in this conversation and that you want to listen to what they have to say. And so the third part of this now is that you get a chance to say, I'm going to fix this. Here's how I'm going to fix this. Here's what I'm going to do to fix this problem. Here's where the chance for you get to be the hero. You get to come in and take care of the problem. Your company a lot of times is not rated on how well you do the first time you come out to a customer and when you do things perfectly every time. Yes, your company is rated on that, but it is also rated on how you respond to situations like this, to how you respond to gas leaks, to how you respond to water leaks, to how you respond to carbon monoxide, things like that. This is a game and you have to play it and you know how to fix the problem so you're going to tell them how you're going to do it. Reassure the customer that you're going to take care of it. Tell them how you're going to take care of the problem. If my techs tell me, hey, we need a handyman at this house because we there, we put an accidental hole in the wall there. I don't even think twice about it. We just we just call our handyman up and we, we just make it happen. You know, ma'am, I'm so sorry we just put a hole in your wall. Um, but, um, but I am going to take care of this. I've got a hand, I've already called a handyman and they're going to come back out and take care of this. Um, they're going to set up an appointment with you and, um, do it at your convenience. You don't have to pay for anything. It's, uh, it'll look just like brand new when it's all done. So, so I just wanted to talk about a couple other types of customers. You know, we talked about, um, legitimate, legitimate grievances, um, what about illegitimate grievances? People who like really don't have a problem, but they're just complaining. A lot of those times it, they're, you know, like they just want attention uh, and they, they just want some nurturing uh, a lot of times. So, you know, a real simple thing that you can say for uh, a real simple thing that you can say to somebody is, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Here you go. Let me take care of that for you. Um, what can I do for you? You know, just things like that. But, but basically you're, you're, you're providing that person with the um, attention that they're looking for so that they can get what they want. Um, another type of customer, so we've got our illegitimate, our legitimate, uh, we've got abusive customers. Abusive customers, you guys have all seen them, but abusive customers, you just have to let them know you're trying to let them know that you're going to take care of it. However, you can't treat me like this. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do everything in my power. I'm going to talk to my boss right now and I'm going to get this taken care of. You're not going to have to pay a dime for it. However, you can't continue. I, I can't work here if you continue to, um, you know, be a, abusive like this, uh, if, you know, verbally abusive or physically abusive and, and tell them, you know, tell it. Tell them, uh, tell them how it is. You know, there's nothing wrong in speaking up for yourself. So, um, we're out here providing a service and we're giving, 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 but you can't always just let people run over you either at the same time. So, um, give, but at the same time, you got to hold your ground. You got to, you're still a person and you have to respect yourself. And, and, you, and if that abusive customer is going to continue on doing it his way, then you leave. It's real simple. And then you just call the office and you let them know, hey, I'm just calling to let you guys know this guy was, uh, you know, he's yelling at me. And, uh, you know, like one time he like, he, he like kind of like pushed me a little bit, you know, like I just, I was out of there. I just had to get out of there. So, uh, which brings us to threat makers. Threat makers are the people who are like, well, I'm going to do this. If you don't do this, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to give you a review, you know, or something like that. And, uh, you know, like these are people who just, they get a rise out of emotionally or physically intimidating people. And, um, you know, and then maybe on the inside there's, they're silent, you know, there's like a, but, but they like to make other people feel bad about themselves because whatever's going on in their lives. So, 
Um, all of these people, it really comes down to, uh, it really comes down to a few things. Listen to what the customer has to say, right? Empathize with them. Put yourself in their shoes, okay? How would you want to be treated or how would you want a company to treat your parents if they were in that situation, okay? And then do that. Treat them that way, okay? Um, you can apologize. You know, you put yourself in their shoes, then you can apologize. Then you tell them what you're going to do about the problem and how you're going to fix it. And then you tell them how you're going to fix it. And then you fix it, you hold your word, uh, you stick to your word, and you make it happen. And that will, that will, that can turn this whole thing around. Because basically, the customer is just telling you that I have something wrong. Now, what are you going to do about it? Because I'll be fine if you do some do something about it. Okay? But I'm not fine with how it is right now. So, you need you guys need to fix this. Is what they're saying. So, just fix it. Okay? Uh thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate it. This is kind of a touchy subject. Um you know, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist. I just kind of deal with, you know, this is this is how I deal with people um out in the field. It's gotten me here so far, so kind of thought I would share it with you guys, um, see if it helps out at all. So, you know, let me know how you guys think. Let me know how you guys think about uh, angry customers. And I would love to hear some of your stories because I'd like to share them later on, um, you know, in some videos. So uh, where we can where we can talk about this uh, a little bit more in depth. So don't let these customers get you fired up. Stay professional. Do what you know how to do take care of people the way you know how to take care of people. Um, it's not going to come back on you like, oh man, why'd you give that free capacitor away? Well, shoot, man, I was trying to take care of the customer. You know, that, who can fault you for that? You know what I mean? So, okay guys, well, thank you so much for watching another video. I'll try to have one out in, uh, again next week. Uh, what are we even talking about, man? I got so many ideas. I got so many ideas for videos right now. So, um, so we will just keep plugging them away, and uh, hopefully you guys keep watching them. Um, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.